Hey, Paige. <laughs> See some familiar names and some new names. There's so many new yeah. Zoom configurations too. There's like, where? Now we've got reactions and yeah. <laughs> Did you see like the filters that are available now? <laughs> yes. Working with a product, like since we work at a product company and we always bring these crazy ideas to our product team and our PAs, I always wonder like, who was the person at Zoom that had to go into that meeting and advocate for like, we need the pretty filter. Do you understand <laughs> me? Listen loud and clear. We need the cat. We need the pretty filter. <laughs> yes. like, who did it? Because they're my kind of girl. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think we can all thank uh, COVID for that one. I know. We've been virtual for so long. Like, the, yeah, exactly. The only real thing I, <laughs> I mean, there's some, but like the COVID thing at work that I'm most excited for is all of a sudden like touch up my appearance mode, use low lighting, like all <laughs> the Snapchat filters are available now. And I'm like, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. so surprise everybody at Jack Robert now thinks I'm like 10 times prettier. <laughs> <laughs> also it's like more acceptable to come to a meeting with a top knot you know <laughs> yeah we're gonna do top knot but make it professional <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right we got them flowing in looks like we got a lot of owners directors managers on the call a lot of jackrabbit friends still some people that are using other class management or things like Excel and Google tools and what I call like 2021 paper. Yeah. But lots of Jackrabbit friends out there. So it seems like we can get rolling knowing that we've got owners, directors who are probably struggling to like hit a work-life stride. We feel you on that. Um, I'll just share just a personal tidbit. When I told my husband what this webinar was on, he like spit his coffee out this morning. Like <laughs> you are presenting on work-life balance. So I get it. And lots of Jackrabbit friends in the audience, which is good news because this is not a Jackrabbit training. This is really meant to benefit anybody who could just find a better stride in work and life. So yeah. you're cool, Amber. I think we can end the poll and- All right, let's do it. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I know you have very busy schedules, so we appreciate you taking the time to um, hang out with us for a little bit today. Um, as you can see, we've got a banter back and forth. We just like to have fun here. So today we are going to focus on um, how you can hit your growth groove. Emily's got some great tips on some habits that we can break. And I know I will be raising my hand for a lot of these on habits that I need to break. Um, but we're going to have a good time um, all at the same time. So um, my name is Amber Smith, and I'm the client marketing specialist here at Jackrabbit. And in my former life, I was a dance studio office admin as a dance studio teacher and um, grew up in a dance studio. So I totally understand, um, maybe not the owner aspect, but definitely the admin side of it and being involved at a youth activity center. And today I am joined by Emily, the director of marketing here at Jackrabbit. Hey, everybody. All right, so Amber gave you a little bit of overview, but like she said, my name's Emily. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Jackrabbit. And my favorite role or part of my job is watching people like you, owners, directors, managers, bring their big dreams to life. What I found about these industries that we work with is um, we may not have been the most business-minded folks when we got into it. We were the dreamers of the world and we had passions and dreams and we wanted to inspire people. And we decided the best way to do that was to open our doors and build these businesses and try to impact as many students as possible. So I love watching those, those dreams come to life, those things that you thought about years and years and years ago when you were coming up as a dancer or a gymnast or a swimmer or in music or any other industry that you're in. You loved it so much that you thought, I've got to get this out and share it with other people. I love that part of my job. But before I was at Jackrabbit, I actually worked in the childcare field, which may seem a little different than what you do, but it's not that far off, right? It's still parents, it's still children. I was a director for a few of the national brands that are probably in your neck of the woods. And then I moved up to, to the regional director level. And then somehow some crazy way, a, the software side of the world, our vendors said, we think you would be a good salesperson. I said, no go, don't know how to sell a thing. But I took a leap of faith and here I am because I just like you thought, okay, I'm really passionate about the owners and directors and the stress that we're facing on the front lines. And I got I to gotta help them. I got to share this. So my passions just kind of moved from the children 
to the directors and the managers and the owners like me. So I say that to let you know that while I, I'm here at Jackrabbit, just like Amber said, we get the front lines. We understand what you're doing on a day to day. It wasn't that long ago. I'm still old enough to remember what it's like to balance the parent, <laughs> student, and then staff dynamic because sometimes staff is the hardest one. So mm -hmm. that's who I am. But the star of the show is Zippy, Jackrabbit, of course. Um, Jackrabbit, if you, if you are new to us, we were founded in 2004. And since then, we have helped over 12,000 programs across the globe scale, grow their classes, manage over 8 million classes at this point, and just inspire millions and millions of students. But along the way, and the reason that we're here, it's been clear to us that many people are struggling to find that work-life balance that we talked about. And Amber and I are included. We will raise our hand many times in this session and <laughs> say guilty. And we, this is not the first time we've done this session. So every time we still, still haven't mastered that. So guilty. But if we're being honest, like 2020 was no help and 2021 ain't been great either. <laughs> so that's why we're here today, because we think even in your uh, pre-COVID life, work-life balance was difficult. Now it might have become even harder and who knows what's on the horizon. So we want to mm -hmm. kind of give you some best practices, some advice, pick up a tidbit or two and see what you can do to, to find the balance again. So like Amber alluded to earlier, we are not here to do a big deep dive into Jackrabbit. This isn't a tutorial session or a demo. Um, so if you're here for that, stick around to the end. We'll tell you how to get there. But this is about you and making sure that you are the best version of yourself that you can be. So we're going to get real and kind of brutally honest sometimes about your habits, those that you need to keep that you're doing well, and then those that you should consider breaking. Uh, we're going to get you connected to the right kind of people, the right kind of companies, the right kind of technology and maybe get you out of the rut that you're feeling a little bit in. But we're also gonna take you back to basics, to those people you were when you first started building this dream so that we can get you paid and have your team working smarter and not harder. The idea of this session started actually with this quote and I want you guys to read it and then reread it and then staple it to your forehead, write it on a sticky note, put it on the wall. You are allowed to be a map, both a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. Two things can be true at once. You can be a perfect masterpiece and you can be on the struggle bus every now and then at the same time. But what I found in talking to my teammates, my girlfriends, my sisters, is that we tend to give everybody else in our circle the benefit of the doubt and a little bit of grace to be in progress versions of themselves. But when you wake up, when your feet hit the ground, that alarm goes off, for some reason you expect yourself to be done, to be a finished product of everything you ever dreamed you were going to be. Like I have a really bad way of saying, I'm at the age now where I said I'd have my stuff together. And do I? Like I'm not quite sure, but I, this was that magic age for me. By the time I'm here, I'm going to have it all together. Give yourself a little grace. Give yourself the same grace that you give when you are talking to your teammates, your sisters, your friends, and you're cheering them on. You can be a masterpiece and a work in progress and still be a fantastic mom, a fantastic dad, a great business owner, a great leader of people. You can do both of them at the same time. So the first thing we need to do is break or make some habits. And if I asked a lot of you, if I had included this one on the poll, if I said, how long does it take to form a habit? Well, what I would hear most likely is seven days, 30 days, but in reality, it takes 66 days to form a habit or to break one. The concept of the 30 day habit, it's crazy. It came from a dermatologist or cosmetologist decades ago. And I have no idea how he decided like he was the foremost expert of habits in cosmetology. But after like dozens and dozens of real life studies from Harvard and Yale and Cambridge, it turns out it's really about 66 days that it takes you to start doing something well or start doing something bad over and over and over. So it's not 30, but it turns out that you have 66 days ahead of you from here if you take one of these habits and move forward with it. But we're gonna break down what we think are the top five that you should consider breaking or making. And you probably don't wanna do it all at once, right? You don't wanna leave this session with the five that we identified and say, starting today, all five, I'm on it. Because you're gonna let yourself down. 66 days is a lot of time. So take one, maybe assign another one to a girlfriend or a coworker or somebody you know and challenge each other keep each other accountable for that 66 days 
All right, so here are our five habits we want you to consider. So like I said, since 2004, the thousands of clients we've worked with and the dozens of industry partners and leaders and all those associations that you guys have come to love, we found that these are the common threads of habits. So number one, and I am right there with you, 90% of adults in the US say that they are using a device, a phone, a TV, a tablet in the hour before they go to bed. I know the answer to this, but Amber, are you still in that group? 1,000%. And this year I like made a resolution. I really did because I was sick of doing this session and saying I'm still in the group. I am now like reading books before I go to bed. Um, And I assume there are dozens of you out there raising your hand saying like, yeah, that's me. I'm still guilty of doing it like right when I wake up, turning my phone on and checking email and social media before I even have coffee. But Mm -hmm. the truth is we're all telling ourselves the same story. We're using that device either before we go to bed or when we wake up to help us wind down or start the day to help us relax or get started, right? Like that's the story we tell ourselves. Oh, I just browse Instagram to chill out. Uh Doing the exact opposite. (laughs) And I'm not telling you something you haven't heard over and over and every magazine or book you pick up tells you to put the devices down, but really like it's not just the stimulation and what you're reading the blue light on that phone or the movement on the TV, they're essentially communicating with the internal clock in your brain and saying like, keep this party going, let's go. So every time your brain is seeing lights and sounds, it's just thinking like, I gotta stay awake. I gotta keep this going. So if you're in that 90%, really, really consider putting the device to bed and think about where it is in your house. So if it's, you know, even if it's on vibrate, if it's not, if it's not on sleep mode, the rings, the dings, the vibrations, they're all going to get in the way of that restful pattern. And they're going to get in the way in the way ultimately of the better balance that you need. Second habit, client after client we talk to, they all describe the problems, both new and old, that they're facing in their programs. And it's obvious to us on the outside that you guys are so far in the thick of it. You are working so far in the business that it is nearly impossible to see yourself as the owner or the leader of the business. And that can get really easy to do. If you find your way of sinking into seats and doing the day-to-day operations again, you're no longer in a place where you're elevated to think about where the business is going. And what's happening there, if you stop seeing yourself as the entrepreneur or the leader or that big dreamer you were in the beginning is you are essentially abandoning the two critical roles that you are the only one that can play. There's no one else that can do these things, you guys. One of them is to be the chief risk taker, to look at the friction points in your business and say, this is a problem. We have, we have a problem here or there's a problem on the horizon and I need to do something about it or my business is not gonna survive this. And that's gonna be true after COVID. It was true before COVID. Um, you need to be the one to say, what if we try something totally different here? What if we break the mold and turn everything we know on its head and do something different for just a minute? you guys are the chief risk taker in your business. And if you're in the thick of it, doing the day-to-day operations, you're abandoning that seat. And there really isn't anybody else that can come in and fill it. And the second seat is to be the innovator. So to think about where you could be in a year, five years, 10 years, what does the industry that you're in look like when all of this is over and we're on the other side of it? What does the gym, dance, swim, music, child development market need that doesn't have that you can bring and be innovative to it. If you leave those two roles to be in the day-to-day, who in your building could possibly fill that role? And most of the time, the answer is nobody. So that means that the program and the business are going to become a little stagnant and you might not be able to grow. So don't be so stuck in the business that you can't think big picture and you can't see the other side of this thing because there will, for my friends in the back, like we will be on the other side of this at some point. So make sure you're staying in those seats so that you can think about what comes next, because when the doors flood open, there's going to be a lot of people competing with you and not just in your own industry. So be ready for what happens next. Third habit up. All right, ladies, guys, hang with me, but this one may lean a little heavier on my girls. (laughs) Unfortunately, women are the most vulnerable to this idea of saying no. We feel guilty about it. And oftentimes it become, it's from the way that we were raised or the way that we're raising our own children. 
there's just a lot of pressure for some reason on us to explain to ourselves or to explain ourselves and, and why we're not ready to commit to something or that we need more time. You need to be everything to everybody all of the time, it feels like. That weight is heavy. So there's too many people, there's too many things, and you cannot possibly be the only one with the answers or a solution. You're putting that pressure on yourself a little bit. So if this is the habit that you want to break, if you want to learn to start saying no a little bit more often, I think there are three things you could start with that won't totally shift how people perceive you, because I know that's important. We don't want to just start being the no person all of a sudden. It'll confuse our friends and our teammates. But number one, keep your responses simple. Oftentimes when I talk to you guys or my friends or Amber is also very guilty of this, instead of just declining or saying like, I can't do that right now, or I can't do that tonight, we've got you, you'll over explain. We've got baseball or I've got open house. I've got six things on my plate. You don't have to explain yourself all the time. All you have to do is say, I can't commit to that right now. Maybe next time. Keep it simple. You're not hurting anybody's feelings. Number two, if you're nervous about saying no, buy yourself some time so you can compose yourself and come up with a better response so that you're not apologizing or explaining yourself away. Just say, let me get back to you later and then separate your refusal for rejection. You are not rejecting your child or your friend or your staff member when you say no. You're just refusing an offer. You're declining something. You're saying, I'm not ready to take that project on. You're turning it down. You're not turning them down. So separate those two things. It's not personal. You're just being honest and saying, I can't handle that right now, but I wanna give it some time to think about. Number four on the habits list. Focusing on the negative instead of the positive. And I don't know, I don't think I know anybody in my life who doesn't need to work on this, especially in the last four or five, six months. <laughs> but look at you. Just stop for a second and look around. You faced a shutdown, a real life, straight out of the movies, government mandated lockdown. And then a reopening, maybe, and then another lockdown. And now, like, what happens? What comes next? No one in a million years was prepared for this. If they were, that's really creepy. And I want to know how. <laughs> um, exactly. Even less, like we were not prepared for reopening with dozens of new precautions and rules while balancing this new set of concerns that parents and students and staff all have. But I would bet that you have taken the last 10, 11 months and you've looked at your enrollment numbers enough times that you've got doubt, you've got disappointment, your enrollment and your revenue is not as high as it was, it's not as high as you needed it to be, you want it to be higher, but you have dozens of students that have come back. And if you're still in closure, you have dozens of parents that are still communicating with you, still following your social feeds, still staying in touch. It's way easier for us to focus on the deficit than this and the students that haven't come back versus the people that are here with us and still engaging. And Amber and I will tell you, we've got the same issue at Jackrabbit. You know, we were not immune to COVID consequences. We lost clients. <laughs> some closed, which was really sad for us to watch. Some cut costs and then some flat out chose to use a less expensive software, which was probably the <laughs> like biggest killer of all. <laughs> you know, they said, we're gonna sacrifice some of the feature sets that Jackrabbit has so that we can save a few bucks. That hurts. but. We also kept the majority of our clients and they grew, we grew our relationships with them. And we even met new people over the summer that came on board with Jackrabbit. Some of you are on this webinar right now. You decided in April, May, or June to take the plunge and jump onto Jackrabbit. We had one of the busiest summers we've ever had, but if we're not careful, it's easy for us to focus on the clients we lost or the people that walked away from us. So we've got to correct that bad habit too. Number five on the list is your core values. And that's been a buzzword. You've heard it all over the conference circuit. Almost every webinar you're on is talking about core values. But you, you might have them like explicitly written down somewhere or posted on the wall. Um, but even if you don't, somewhere at the core of this, when you opened your doors or when you became a director or a manager of these programs, there were things, there still are things that you internally value that you believe are truth to who you are. So if you haven't, shared that, if you haven't put that out into the world, you're not really sharing with your team or your parents how you intend to grow or why you intend to grow. So 
if you don't have them, now's really the time to reflect, get with your team and put them together. But if you do, one of the habits we see is that they're on your website, they're on a plaque on the wall, they're in the registration packet, but you're not really living to them. You're not running things through this core values filter. At Jackrabbit, we are really lucky enough to have a leadership team, um, Mark, Mike, Darren, they really hold us accountable to running everything through the idea of a core value filter. If you've got your values in place, make sure you're utilizing them in conversations with your clients, with your teachers, and really live them out. Does this meet our values? If not, we're going to move away from it. So I think now that we've got you thinking about habits and the right way to break them or create them, let's talk about who should be around you. When you talk about networking, and man, did networking mean something different in 2018 and 2019. It's a little different these days, but we use this like blanket statement, like, oh, these are my network of peers. I hear a lot of buzzwords, but I want to break down like the, the roles and the people that should be around you or in your network that you are working with as your inner circle. So the first one is somebody that I would consider a coach. This is the numbers guy. When you think about your networking group, you need to have a coach or somebody who's going to work with you on goal settings and metrics. This guy or girl is the numbers cruncher. They are going to look at where you need to be. Uh, they're going to give you all of the data and metrics that got you where you are and where you need to be going forward. I would consider that probably that advisor role. When I think of a coach, Sometimes I think of our friend, Sean Deaver, that's who he is. He's going to really take the data, do the math and say, here's where you're at. Here's the benchmark. Here's what you got to do to get there. That's mm -hmm. somebody you want in your inner circle. But then you also want a mentor in your inner circle and your mentor. You need to think about them as your safe place to land. They're the person you can be the most vulnerable with. And it's intentionally a very long term relationship. So this is somebody that you have known for a while or that you plan on knowing for a long while. And it's somebody that you can be really honest and raw with when you need to be, and they've got your back. They're going to support you. You'll also want to have a good consultant to call on every now and then. And a consultant is a little bit more niche. So it might be more short term. It might be just somebody who's coming in to talk to you about one very specific project or piece of the business. So after your coach says, here's the numbers, here's where it's good and here's where it's not so good, you might hire a consultant to come in on that not so good and work just right there with you. They have knowledge that you don't have, and they're bringing something to the table for short term to make an evaluation or a proposal on how you can change something and then get out of the situation that you're in. Um, the other thing I see our clients rely on probably now more than ever is this idea of virtual groups or virtual conferences. And Amber, you have been a staple across all of our virtual groups, the, the Facebook user group, emails. So you can probably bring a little bit of insight into that. But what do you feel like that virtual connection or those virtual user groups bring to the table in your peer group? Oh, absolutely. So before COVID-19, I was at a trade show and a guy came up to me and was like, you're the Facebook lady. <laughs> it was one of our clients from our Facebook group. So um, if you're familiar with Jackrabbit, if you're a Jackrabbit client, you've probably heard of this group. Um, it is closed to our users and it's a safe place for them to share ideas and solutions and business tips. It doesn't always have something to do with Jackrabbit. Um, there's a few of us uh, Jackrabbit staff that are in there and moderate and jump in as needed, but it's really a safe place for our users. And I think the thing I love most about the group is we do share some new enhancements that have been released that are hot off the press, but you get to connect with other owners managers and office staff that are using the same software that you are that are fighting the same battles that you are and everyone is so willing to help and share ideas it's a great community to be a part of and during the pandemic it it became even bigger like that thing was so busy all the time and it was really cool to witness how Everyone across all of our industries just rallied together to help one another because, as Emily said, none of us were prepared for this. Um, we were there to help as we could, but we were learning alongside with you. So, um, in addition to that, as far as the trade shows and the in person conferences, I think we're all missing that in person, face to face um, connection. 
And as Jackrabbit's core value of connecting with others, that is something that's so important to us. So right now we're making sure to connect with you through virtual training and conferences. Um, and there's some training coming up, just a little shameless plug right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but those of you that are here, if you're in the, the Facebook user group, let everybody else know in chat, because I think one of the things that we, you know, we used to struggle in kind of pre-COVID times with this concept of like, there aren't many solutions like Jackrabbit that serve dance, gymnastics, swim, music, a lot of softwares like specialized. And that used to maybe sometimes work against us. People would say like, oh, well, this is a gymnastics feature or that's a swim feature and I'm a dance studio. But mm -hmm. now since COVID, what we've really seen is, especially on that user group, some of those industries are a little bit ahead of you. Maybe they might've faced this already or they found a solution for it. So to see swim reaching out and asking dance, you know, how they're navigating or how they're uh, keeping their parents engaged and to see dance ask gymnastics, how they're doing social distancing and putting protocols like that in place. All of a sudden that thing that used to maybe be a question mark about how could Jackrabbit really serve all of the industries is now abundantly clear that we're not as different as we thought we were. Um, we all have kind of the same principles move, like to move forward with. And actually maybe we can learn from each other because everybody's got different governing bodies and, um, at this point, it's a guessing game. Like I haven't found one person who's like, this is exactly what we do. This is how we do it. We're all just trying new things and throwing it at the wall, hoping it sticks. So to watch all the industries just talk to one another, if you're not in that user group, you don't have to be, but jump into chat, find a peer to work with and get to know another Jackrabbit user, even if they're not in your industry. Absolutely. I think that's where I see the most collaboration is um, different industries to other industries. So yeah, can learn from anybody. Absolutely. Okay, so Amber and I have gotten you connected with the right people. You've got a list of habits that you want to make or break. So now the next step in your new balance is making sure that you are connected with the right resources and the right kind of technology. Um, Amber, you've dealt with a lot of clients in your time at Jackrabbit since you started in support side of the world. Um, what have you found the most beneficial for them in, in this kind of idea of balancing work and home and life as we know it. Absolutely. So before COVID-19 happened, and I'm sorry, we still have to keep referring to that. Um, but, you know, I would say you want technology that's going to grow with you. But um, more than anything, you need technology that's going to pivot with you and be willing to pivot with you. So um, if you're getting started with a new system or new software, you want to be connected with someone who can help you get started. So is there a team of experts that'll work you through your setup? Is there someone you can lean on in the first 30, 45, 60 days um, of using that product? Ask that question before you commit to a solution. Um, for example, Jackrabbit has onboarding staff and when new people sign up for a free trial, they get to work with a jumpstart coach through their first 60 days to get set up so that they you know, have one person that they're leaning on and getting consistent help. And then they graduate to our support team and are able to live chat, request calls, send in tickets and get whatever it is that they need. So another thing to consider is, does the software that you're using have um, training for your staff? So we already know that you're busy people. Um, you don't necessarily have time to learn something yourself and then teach other people. Um, so you want something that allows them to learn on their own time. Um, here at Jackrabbit, we have the Help Center with the step-by-step -step instructions. We have these fabulous short how-to videos that are like two to three minutes long. Um, if you've ever watched a couple of those videos, throw that in the chat because I'm pretty sure um, a lot of us like those. Um, we also have the Jackrabbit training system. So this debuted at our Boost conference back in 2019. And this is a way for your staff to learn on demand, online, at their convenience. There's different lessons for different tasks. They can quiz themselves and they can get Jackrabbit certified. So that just helps you know that you have qualified staff to um, use your Jackrabbit application. Yeah, I love those tools. And I, I know Marie is on here. She always comes and supports us. So I will say like the, the jumpstart approach that we have when you first started your database where you've got 30, 60, 90 day check-ins and 
you know, a one-on-one -on -one coach, that doesn't necessarily stop once you become a client, right? You may not need us as much as we need you. Like we need you to talk to us, um, <laughs> but you may not need us on that kind of uh, routine level, but you might need maintenance. Um, and one of the great things that Marie does is every time we've got a new feature that comes out in, in like a mega way. And when we released spot TV or uh, the simplified menu, all of the new pages, anytime we do something like that on a bigger scale, Marie is really going to act as like the group's jumpstart coach. And she's going to do webinar series and she's going to put that kind of stuff out in the world so that yes, you may have, you may have been using Jackrabbit for 11 years with us, but the simplified menu is new and you're going to have to relearn that. We're not done holding your hand. So as much as you might want to say like, I don't, I'm not ready for that. I don't want to look into it. Think of Marie as your new jumpstart coach for the new features. And Amber too, they partnered together to get that out in the world. And then the checkup calls, man. I love those things for Jack. Oh, yeah. clients. The world is your oyster. What do you want to talk about? What do you need help <laughs> with? Like get on there. And if you just miss somebody, you know what I mean? We've had people schedule them on lockdown because they're just like, I need to talk to a human. <laughs> yeah. And the best part is, I mean, it's included in your subscription, so it's not anything extra. You are entitled to that support. Yes, you are. Use it and abuse it. All right. Next up, we're going to talk about going paperless. And every time I say that, I like giggle. Like, who's still talking about paper? Because we're a lot of you are Jackrabbit clients, so we better not be talking about the days where you had like paper registration and written immunizations and all the handwritten files. I'm, I hope I'm not talking about that with you guys. If I am, schedule the checkup call. <laughs> um, but I think I'm talking about like the 2021 version of paper, which is Excel, Constant Contact, uh, Google Forms, Google Sheets, all of these systems that you just dump a ton of information into. Um, you're just basically storing information there and maybe trying to sort through it. But that's the new generation of paper. And even if you are a Jackrabbit user or you're on another online cloud-based management tool, there are probably still some processes in your building that you are doing with Google Sheets, Excel, Google Mail. Like you just think about what you're trying to do on paper still. And if you're a Jackrabbit client, schedule that call, see if maybe there are other workarounds that people have figured out how to get that into the system. Or if it wasn't a good time for you to try on something like uh, you know, absences and makeups or skills before, like maybe now is really the time to automate that. Like Amber said, there's, there's a lot of you that are in new seats or you've promoted people to seats that they weren't in before. And, you know, go back and look at what processes you don't have built into Jackrabbit and call us up or get on that user group and see if anybody else has found a better way to get that into an automated system. So get rid of your paper once and for all. <laughs> And when you're doing that, look around and figure out like the reasons that you need to go paperless. For one, declutter your office. You need to have a safe and secure place to store all that do documentation, no matter what it's about. But thanks to COVID, I, I'm sick of saying that word, but we live in a contactless world. So those days of walk-in registration and uh, like clipboard skills charts, in-person parent and athlete and student check-ins, they are over for now. We don't have them on the horizon yet. We are hopeful, but they're not there. So you got to have something in a system that allows you to collect the data, communicate with parents and staff and, and do it all electronically. But you also need to like remove the phys physical cabinets and storage that you've got. Like right now with social distancing, you need all the space that you can get. So all of that furniture, it doesn't have a place anymore in the lobby or a back room. You, you need that space now. <laughs> um, so you want to have a system where you can type a parent's name in, a child's name, a class, and all that information just comes up at your fingertips and helps you answer some questions, make decisions and move forward. Take your critical processes digital. And when we say critical processes, what we mean is things like taking attendance, sharing virtual class links, if you guys are doing that, uh, sharing digital resources, downloads, PDFs with your students, your families, obviously posting tuition and taking payments. Um, the staff time clock is another one. All of those things, like I said before, you may be managing in another system, Excel or Google or Sheets somewhere, but they're critical to your business. And you want to move that into one central location. And you have to be able to ask yourself, like, can I click a button and have a system tell me the story of this class or this student or this family? And if you can't, it's a really good time to evaluate either the way that you're managing on paper or the binders of death, as I call them, or the way that you're managing Jackrabbit. Maybe that needs to be utilized a little better for you. 
All right. This is Amber's favorite part, but <laughs> these days getting paid is probably the most important of all. So revenue yeah. growth and cash flow, they are a little scarier right now than they have been sometimes. And times are tough, but that's not an excuse for you to give away free lessons or classes or let your business take the financial hit to save face and, and do it in the name of customer service. If you get in over your head with all of that, there will not be another side. And all that saved face and goodwill, it will mean nothing. So since the very beginning, we have helped you guys process, listen to this number, over 20 billion, that's B, billion with a B, dollars in tuition. That is a ton of tuition and billing processing. And I don't think that there's anybody at this point in our team who knows more about it or can speak to it as well as maybe Marie, because she's on here too, but Amber, because she's <laughs> worked and supported with so many clients over the year. And when we put things like discounting and prorating and the new post tuition fees and all this automation out, we just make her like dig in and learn how to use it so much. But, you know, Amber, times are different than they were, and they're going to be a little bit more different in the future. So what would you say in the getting paid and the financial aspect of Jackrabbit is more critical than it ever was before? Absolutely. So um, before COVID was even a thing, I'm just going to paint this picture for you. So back in my studio days, Mm, this was probably 15 years ago. Um, we were not using Jackrabbit because that was, you know, before online registration was a big deal. Um, we had this binder of death, as Emily likes to call it, of 1,300 families that had filled out their credit card authorization form. Now, we won't go into how this is completely not compliant, but also not really a thing 15 years ago. And each time it was time to process payments for monthly tuition, I had to type in the 16-digit code, the expiration date, the zip code, hit print, tear off the receipt, put one in a pile to enter into the computer, take one, put it in a little envelope with a label on it so I could put it in the family's mailbox. Then I had to take my stack of 1,300 receipts and individually enter them into the computer on the family's account. Now, the amount of payroll that was spent on me doing this process did not make that a very efficient process. So fast forward to Jackrabbit in 2021. Um, the point being, if you don't have a strong billing workflow, money is slipping through the cracks. Um, and right now, no one has the ability to let money slip through the cracks. So it's important that you have not only a strong platform that allows you to post tuition and then also process that tuition, but you want to have a good workflow so that no one's being missed. Um, we learned when Jackrabbit implemented discounting and prorating that, that was automated, we learned that 50% of students have a special pricing each month. That is just, I mean, that's insane. Um, it's not 50% of organizations or clients. It's no percent of all of the students that Jackrabbit all has. of the students cumulatively across <laughs> all of our clients so that means a lot of you were doing manual work and you know it was a solution or a problem that we needed to find a solution for so the discounting and automated um, options and scenarios that you can set up in Jackrabbit are like take advantage of those obviously if you're giving a discount for someone being left-handed with freckles on their face you know Jackrabbit can't do that but sibling discounts multi-class discounts um, any of that you can set up and just let Jackrabbit do the work for you it takes all that human error out of it as well and then in 2020 we took it a step further we noticed a lot of people were opening up you know more classes because people could take classes on Zoom. So, you know, families wanted to take more and that better supported your organizations. And it was important to be able to um, assign the discount up to 20 classes so that you weren't over discounting yourself. And then in 2021, this is the mega of all enhancements. Um, we're making our billing platform even smarter and more powerful. So batch tuition billing, and e-payment processing can be set up to be automated so you can schedule it and forget it. That means that vacation that you need for that work-life balance that we're talking about here, you can take it, even if it's billing time. 
probably the thing I'm looking forward to the most. <laughs> I can't wait. There's so many things. Like I love set it and forget it. The uh, payment required in the parent portal is coming. That's a huge one. And then the um, even the discounting and prorating, like it feels like we've been talking about that thing for eons, but every time product like comes and shows us what they've been working on, there's always even more refinements to that. Like we, our product team watches you guys and, and sees how you're using discounting and prorating. And sometimes we like shake our head, like, how did they come up with that? But we got to solve for it. So they go in there and they refine it and they make it more intuitive and smarter. And the things they come up with on discounting and prorating, just, I want to know which of you they're doing it for, because it's amazing. These loops and hoops and jumps and everything, but you got to do what you got to do to keep the doors open. We get that. So yeah, set it and forget it. All of the parent experience stuff that's coming. We're really excited. Um, to get the money stuff under control so you can get paid. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we've set you up with a good foundation of where to start. So I know we've gone over a ton of information and after you work through those steps, it's really important that you are able to answer some questions. You cannot make great decisions for yourself or for your business if you don't have the data or the information that tells you the story. So I think ultimately, Amber, what we're looking for here is like, what questions should these people watching the webinar be asking after they put all of this stuff in place? So if you have a cloud solution where you're putting the data in, you should be able to get the data out, right? You want to be able to paint that picture of where your business is at any given time, even if it is, you know, after a pandemic. Um, so taking the guesswork out and being able to answer the questions. Like, I'm not gonna read all of these, but you can see the type of questions that you should be able to answer and ask yourselves. Like, what families have not returned? Can we send them a postcard or maybe an email and just let them know that we missed them and we realize that they're not here? Which classes are the most popular? If there's classes with wait lists, do you add more of those classes? In which months do we generate the most revenue? Maybe you put some of that money aside to help in the summer months where it's a little slower. What teachers have the highest retention rates? Obviously, you want to make sure those instructors have plenty of classes on the schedule. So um, just being able to take the information that you have or should have from your software or whatever platform you're using and then applying that to make business decisions is only going to make your program stronger. Totally. And there's a lot of things to track. I mean, obviously, Jackrabbit's got a ton of reporting ability in it. Everybody knows that part of it. But just mm -hmm. keep in mind the same with same with the habits when you you walk away from this webinar, you can't take all of these things on at once. If all of these questions are important to you, nothing can be a priority. So the trick to setting smart goals and having smart key metrics that you're tracking is to just take a few of them. Take two, three, no more than five really critical things to your business. Track them, monitor, watch them. If you're tracking 17, 20, 32 things every month, there's no way you can focus. There's no way that everything can be a priority. <laughs> so, no. you know, like, like we said, you're the chief innovator. You are the chief risk taker. Look at the friction points. Decide what you've got to focus on. Break a habit, make a habit and then get a couple of questions that will help you track like if you're really making progress on that thing. Um, you've got to have good data in there too, right? Like garbage in, garbage out. So whoever you're holding accountable for that data, make sure it's clean and good. Well, and sometimes it's just as simple as what worked and what didn't. And to be perfectly honest, we've implemented that on one of our team meetings and we just have an open forum of like, what worked this week and what should we never do again? <laughs> So even something that simple can help you make those decisions. I love that. On your Friday meetings, your Monday meetings, it, Amber's right. She brought that to the table. And every Thursday, we just ask each other, like, what went well? And what do we need to burn at a dumpster fire and never do again? And it, like, opens the door for these candid, frank conversations. And we get better the next week. Like, those bad habits kind of go away and more of the good habits come up. And um, little tiny tweaks like that to figure out what your priorities should be are critical. So... All right. If you are already using Jackrabbit, which a lot of you are, we've talked a lot about the work-life balance and you're here because maybe you didn't feel like you had that stride. The support team, they're here. They're ready for checkup calls. They want to smooth those processes out. If there's a feature set in Jackrabbit that you've been avoiding like the plague, call them up. You don't have to take it on. You just have to ask like, how does it work? What do I need to do? Sell me this pen for a second. They'll do that for you. Um, but they just want to make sure that they they look at thousands of databases all the time. 
And so they might see something in yours that you think is perfectly, is working just fine. And they might have an idea of something they've seen that could help you smooth those processes out a little bit more. And you never have to take them up on their advice. They're just there to send it out into the world. If you like it, take it. If not, walk away. <laughs> but if you aren't part of the Jackrabbit family yet, start a trial, connect with a coach. Now is a great season for a lot of you that are considering a move or considering starting a software to reach out, uh, see what's going on. And even if you're going to make a decision later, just kind of see what's new at Jackrabbit if you've given us a look before. So with that, I think we're out. There are some questions coming into the chat. Um, we, oh, is there a number to call? Yes. There is a number to call. I will throw that in the chat for you. The email also to uh, Renee, that will go right to the, the sales team. If you want to reach out to the support team, it's support at jackrabbittech.com. Um, but I'll throw the number in the chat. Uh, other than that, keep an eye out. I know Amber's always sending information out about Marie's webinars, about training opportunities, enhancements. Anything else you want them to watch for, Amber? You talked about training a little bit. You want to plug it while we have some? Oh, yeah, while we're here. Um, so I did see that we had someone from New Zealand on the call. So you're going to love this. Marie is doing two weeks of training at the end of March. So March 22nd through 24th, and then March 29th through 31st. Um, March 22nd through 24th is 1 to 5 p.m. Eastern. So all of our North American friends. We'll be able to join that really easily. The first two days are going to take it super slow and go through Jackrabbit front to back. The third day is going to be a little bit more accelerated and make you a power user. So you have the option to join one or all or something in between, um, but you do get recordings to it. So feel free to register even if you can't join live. Um, for my Australian friends, Marie is going live in your time zone March 29th through 31st. So I'm not even going to try to convert what that is in our time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't even know, but it will be one to five in um, Australian time zone. And um, so same thing, the first two days will be more of the basics and taking it slow. And then the third day will be accelerated. So please look out, that email was going out today. So depending on your time zone, you may have just gotten it or you will be getting it soon. Um, but anytime you need to reach out to us, the, the Facebook group is posted there. You can join from there as well. Yep. I love those trainings. I love Marie. Great idea. Shout out to you for doing to the domestic and the international. We feel like we got to get more connected with New Zealand and Australia. So we're excited to do that. And you, you know, do them all. If you feel like it would be helpful for some of your team to go back to basics, send them to foundations. And if you feel like you're a power user, or even if you think you just started and you want to know what power users think about and you're curious, like join level up. Like there's no harm in that. Just sit back, be a fly on the wall and observe for a while. Yes. And I do believe that um, after it goes live, um, she will be chapterizing it. So if you wanted to skip ahead or, you know, maybe take it by pieces, if you're not quite ready for the speed of level up you can certainly do that I do have someone asking about the Facebook group so I'm going to post the link to that in the chat um I love that so, you guys are so engaged with us today. yeah no. join the Facebook group you don't need an you don't need an invite you have to hit join group and then we've got to prove you we got to you know vet you a little bit make sure you are really are you, there you are <laughs> um but we've heard a lot of people on that Facebook group too or Facebook group too say that they're following the corporate page now as well. The corporate page, mm -hmm. the Jackrabbit Facebook and Instagram truly used to be just kind of like branding and fun. And now we've started sharing like some educational resources, some best practices that are more like this webinar, may not be exactly how to use Jackrabbit, but things that you want to know to run your business. So we share tips and tricks like that over on the corporate page too. Not that anybody needs more social media in their life at this point, but feel free to follow that one too. Wow, this is, we have done this webinar so many times. This is the most active chat. Yeah. <laughs> so excited about that. Um, Anna is asking a question about set it and forget it. So that is going into beta here soon. And it's going to have to be in beta for a few months so that we can get a few billing cycles in. So um, we will keep you posted. But if you are interested in being a beta tester, you can email beta at jackrabbittech.com and let them know. Um, I think they start with a small group and then they kind of expand. Um, 
but there is some work involved when you are a beta tester. So just know like you got to actively use it and you got to actively give us feedback, but it is a great way to get access to the feature early and also help us make it the best. Yeah, on that, like, so beta testing, like Amber said, there is some work involved. And remember, like the definition of beta is you're getting the first go at it. So there, there are probably going to be some things that we need to refine. That's why we're looking at you to, to help us give that feedback. If you aren't a Jackrabbit user, spoiler alert, a lot of times free trials automatically get the beta feature because we want to mm -hmm. see like our clients who've been using it for years. Sometimes they have uh, processes in place that are hard for them to break and get into that beta you're a brand new user. So you won't even realize it's new in your beta ing it, beta ing, beta, whatever, beta ing it. Uh, so if you're thinking about trying Jackrabbit, there's some features in there that you'll see they are, they get refined as you're in your free trial and you are signed up for beta automatically. Um, but so we've got the set it and forget it beta. Um, I know the other features on the roadmap that will, you know, we've got private lessons kind of scopes somewhere on the scope this year they're going to be looking for a lot of feedback on things like private lessons um, and then refinements to things like the simplified menu those pages the grids they're they're always i don't know if anybody else has noticed but this last year has been the year where product has really reached out and said hey legitimately okay. get on the phone with us like we want to hear everything yeah. that feedback modal was intensely helpful so thank you everybody for putting all of your thoughts and comments in there and of course like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't time to just remind you like the Facebook forum's great. The idea portal really is very helpful. It's one of the one of the things that we use to prioritize. So I know there can be some heartburn around that. We're always telling you to go to the idea portal, but it, it really is part of the conversation on almost every single product meeting and every single team discussion about what's in there. What are you guys thinking about? What's trending? That's my favorite tab in the idea portal. It's not the most mm -hmm. popular that we've been talking about for years, but like what's the current trend out there what are you guys going to need? Um, so definitely right. that. What else? Um, and with that, I just want to say, like, when we do put it out of feature, don't just think, like, that's it. Like Emily said, we do refine. So if you have feedback on, this is great, but if you could, you know, it yeah. needs to work a little bit like this, you know, just like the simplified menu. We put it out. We're tweaking it. We're making it work for you. Yep. All right, well, we are almost at the end of our time. If anything else came in that we didn't get to, I know we've got Marie here, Amber's here, we'll reach out, but, and then this will go out in recording. This was the most active group we've ever had on this webinar. So thank you so much. Amber, as always, you were a blast to hang out with. All right, everybody. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Yeah.